Welcome back, dear viewers. You're still watching Nile Cruise on Nile TV. And dear viewers, in this segment we have with us Mr. Mahrous El Sanadili, and he is a PhD researcher in the Heritage and Museums, and he is a senior chief creator in the N. M E C. We have the pleasure to have you with us, sir, today in today's episode of Nile Cruise. Uh, thank you, and you are welcome to the National Museum of Egyptian Civilization. Uh, Mr. Mahrous uh, Sanadidi, thank you very much for being with us today on uh, Nile Cruise. If we can start with um, the idea of having a museum for the uh, Egyptian civilization, how did he see it? How do you think uh, the idea would be attractive to the tourists from all over the world and for the Egyptians as well? So at first, uh, let me introduce uh, our museum. Our museum is the National Museum of Egyptian Civilization. Our museum is a non-profit organization under the supervision of the Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities. And we are cooperating co with the UNESCO organization, especially for technical workers. And about our museum has objectives, statements, uh, mission, vision, and uh, activities and service and concerning our objectives we have many objectives uh, the main objectives uh, are to protect and preserve egyptian heritage in both types tangible and intangible heritage or material heritage and immaterial heritage material heritage is artifacts and uh, uh, objects items and so and we are here collecting objects from everywhere, expressing about Egyptian heritage from prehistorical time up to now, via pharaonic time, uh, Greco-Roman time, Coptic, Islamic, modern, and the contemporary. And we are collecting objects and artifacts, and also stories and intangible heritage. Uh, then we are documenting this heritage in digital uh, documentation, uh, media documentation, and paper documentation. Then, uh, if we have a material object, we should make conserving uh, and conservation uh, and restoration. And after restoration, we uh, we going uh, we uh, we moving we are moving this object to storage or magazine according to the material of each object, if it is organic or not organic. And then uh, uh, after that, we can choose some object for exhibition and we keep others in storage. And for exhibition, we should object according to certain themes. themes. Uh, as uh, our museum has uh, 23,000 square meters for exhibition galleries. And this uh, size, or this area, is divided to eight permanent galleries and one as a temporary. And each uh, gallery has special or certain theme and the themes that we will talk here in our museum about Egyptian in dawn of civilization and about the Nile River, about uh, writing and science, about state and society, about embalming and mummies, about material culture and beliefs and thinking. And we have uh, a temporary gallery for rotation themes. Uh, and now, as example, we are uh, exhibiting uh, in a temporary gallery a topic about Egyptian crafts through ages. That we talk about four of oldest crafts Egyptian has known through the ages. And we collect, uh, collected objects related to this uh, crafts. And we are focusing here in our museum on technology or techniques, how the object was made. Uh, and this is a philosophy of our museum. To the civilization is a, produ a, product, a production, and production need a man, 
need material, need tools, and these tools is changing from time to time. And uh, uh, also related to custom tradition for each area. As an example, we have here in Egypt five main geographical areas. We have uh, North Egypt, Upper Egypt, uh, Sinai, uh, Western Desert, Oasis, and Nubia. And each area has special custom tradition for everything, for wearing dresses, uh, for uh, wedding, for uh, special ceremony, giving birth or birthday, uh, and, other, and for uh, jewelry, wearing jewelry, and so. And we try to show our visitors all of this, and to col we collect all of this in our museum to show Egyptian and non-Egyptian what Egyptian has contributed in human being civilization through the ages in different fields, in arts, in science, in literature, in architecture, in administration, in beliefs and thinking, and social life, and so on. Um, sir, what are the most important manuscripts in the museum? And so we have uh, many manuscripts from different period, from Pharaonic time, from Coptic uh, scripts uh, related to uh, Christian religion, related to Islamic uh, religion, especially Holy Book, Holy Book of Muslim. Uh, and we will exhibit uh, in a special uh, gallery. And also we select someone to be exhibited in core exhibition. And if you would like to talk about core exhibition, uh, core exhibition is giving a brief uh, story about Egyptian civilization through the ages, focusing in the main features of each period uh, in prehistorical time, how Egyptian was living, uh, the uh, tools uh, which we were using, and how they were, were using and we have also one of the oldest skeleton found in Egypt, dated uh, to 55,000 years ago, called um, uh, Taramsa skeleton, and we have another skeleton dated uh, to 35,000 years ago, called Nazil Khater skeleton, and we have a lot of stone tools we will exhibit, but with interactive uh, myth method uh, to show the visitors how Egyptian uh, at that time, they're using these objects. And then we talk about um, the main cultures and civilization uh, in Neolithic age or in prehistory as Maadi culture, Nakada, Badari, Fayyum, Bhutu, Fustat. And Fustat, uh, this area, that we are now is a part of Mahdi culture in prehistorical time from 6,000 years ago. And this area was famous for making pottery from 6,000 years ago up to now. And we are focusing in, in this terms. And also, we talk about the main features in pharaonic times, especially architecture. Egypt was characterized in architecture, uh, especially Egypt has two wonders of ancient seven wonders, the Great Pyramid and the Lighthouse of Alexand Alexandria. And so we try to show the Egyptian or non-Egyptian, uh, the, the most famous architects as Imhotep, who designed the first pyramid in the world since uh, 4,700 years ago, uh, and Hem Yunu, the designer and architect of the Great Pyramid, and uh, Sinin Mut, the designer and architect of the Temple of Deir el-Bahari of Queen Hatshepsut, uh, and the tools which uh, the architects uh, were using. And then we are displaying some models and uh, uh, antiquities models related to the architectures, uh, related to houses, to temples, and so on, and uh, 
how many floors uh, the houses uh, in ancient time. And then we talk about uh, science and scribes and uh, the scribes' tools, uh, the inks, the brushes, and which materi materials uh, which the scribes was using. Uh, and we talk about the materials of uh, writings. Uh, and Egypt gifted the world uh, one of the most important uh, material. Um, it is uh, papyrus, papyrus sheet, which helped the world to spread science, to spread writing. Uh, and this was a famous trade during uh, Greek Roman time in Egypt. And we displaying some objects related to this. We talk about um, uh, medicine. We are uh, displaying some objects related, related to surgery uh, tools. And also we are uh, displaying uh, artificial uh, foot. Uh, do you know artificial foot? So some, someone was the daughter of some high priest in uh, 21st dynasty lost uh, some uh, sand of his uh, foot and uh, the Egyptian medicine or physician made for her artificial uh, foot to help her to move or to walk uh, legally or straight uh, way. And Egyptian also uh, had known uh, watch watches, uh, solar watch, and uh, water watch, and, we, uh, and the calendar, and so on. And we talk about uh, different topics uh, related to effect and impact between uh, Egyptian and the Greek or Roman uh, time, especially in science uh, and Alexandria uh, scientists and um, uh, architecture, especially for building the mini temples as Edfu, Komombo, Esna, and so on. And uh, the name, some ga gods and goddesses which uh, uh, came from e Egypt and related to new religion during the Greek Roman time as Nilos, uh, as Osiris, as uh, Ser Serapis, uh, Herbocrat, Isis, and Isis was uh, a goddess of the universe, of the world. And I think the name of Asia came f from the name of Isis, because the Egyptian um, pronounced Isis as Isit. And uh, I think from this name came from Asia continent. Uh, continent. And then we talk about uh, Christian, uh, Muslim, uh, Christian and Muslim. Uh, and uh, how Christianity uh, added some new values for Egyptian and Islam also uh, added new values for Egyptian and the Egyptian developed uh, his thinking and believings to adapt with new religion and so on and we we'll talk about uh, modern uh, Egyptian civilization during uh, Muhammad Ali during uh, Khedivi Ismail uh, and then up to now, um, uh, high dam, building a high dam, and different uh, construction, and so on. And then we uh, conclude our exhibition with custom tradition for uh, Egyptian dresses in Upper Egypt, uh, in North Egypt, uh, in Sinai, in Nubia, and the Oasis and the jewelries and the custom and tradition for jewelries and so on. And we try to give our visitors um, a detailed information about Egyptian civilization to imagine that uh, Egypt has a great civilization and has contributed in human in, uh, civilization in different fields from uh, more uh, more 200,000 years ago up to now in different uh, fields. And so to imagine, uh, and we, we need to um, 
to impact or to know this impaction on Egyptian to change his uh, behavior uh, and his work. And we try to restore Egyptian identity, especially positive character of Egyptian identity. Speaking about the Egyptian identity, um, the museum here is speaking about um, ancient Egyptians, about the Egypt in the Islamic times, in the Coptic times, in the Greco-Roman times. Uh, speaking about the uh, ancient Egyptian times, there are themes. One of them is about the Nile. Uh, how do you see this section or this theme of the museum? Yeah, and, and so about Nile. So ancient Egyptian uh, elevated the Nile and uh, dedicated some deities and the goddesses related to the Nile as Habi, uh, Osiris, Isis, uh, Khonom, uh, and during uh, Greco-Roman time uh, became Nilos, uh, and the name of the Nile came from uh, Greek god Nilos. And during uh, Islamic period, uh, he, um, the Nile um, um, used uh, for building many harbors and uh, Nile measurement, Nilometers, uh, and also uh, Muslim rulers built uh, Nilometers uh, and uh, the wall of Magra al Ayun for providing uh, Cairo and the Citadel with the water and this uh, wall is located north to the, our museum and I think uh, Nile helped Egyptian to know to connect between north and the south and uh, to uh, transform and transport cultures from south to uh, north and also to connect Egypt with uh, the ancient world because uh, Egyptian um, from the time of the Middle Kingdom, connected the Red Sea with the Nile River by the canal called the uh, Suze Street Channel. And this channel was re, uh, re, uh, re, re, dig, re uh, redig many times, especially during uh, the time of Omar ibn al-Khattab, when order uh, ordered uh, Amr ibn al-As to redig uh, the Suez Canal, and it was called the Canal of Amir uh, al muminin and so on. And Nile helped the Egyptian to build the boats, to build, to build the cities, uh, and has a special songs and stories and legends related to the Nile in different time. In Pharaonic time, there are allegiances uh, related to uh, Isis and Osiris. Uh, and uh, at the time of uh, Greek Roma, or Roman also, there are some stories related to uh, uh, a daughter of someone called Isadora. And uh, Isadora was uh, drawing in the Nile, and uh, her father built for her a special tomb with, um, with uh, writing some script uh, uh, the, um, in, the, in the Islamic period also and up to now uh, the Nile is very useful for us and it is considered the main factor of Egyptian civilization of life. through the ages up to now the Nile is a gift for Egyptian and uh, also Egyptian a gift for the Nile as Herodot told and so on um, uh, Mr. Mahrous Sanadili, uh, of course, as a PhD researcher in the Heritage and Museums and the senior chief creator, um, what is the closest to your heart in this place? So I think this place will change this area completely. This and area, this, this, this area, and you can see around us this area. This museum helped oh, this you area. Mean the area around the museum, or you around, mean the yeah, around the museum area? and in Egypt totally, and in the whole of the world, because um, 
This museum is a, a center for in national and international communication. And we are holding many ceremonies and celebration, conference, meeting, training. You started actually? Uh, of course. We, we, uh, we started from um, 2008 for uh, holding uh, conferences uh, by UNESCO, by European Union, by the uh, American University, by some uh, Egyptian university came to our museum to hold uh, meeting and training and so on. And I think this place will change not only this area, not only Egypt, but, but all the world. And this place is a place for um, peace dialogue between all people. We are targeting uh, all people, not only uh, historian, archaeologist, uh, or specialist in, in, in archaeology and history, but we have here in our museum also specialists in DNA, in microbiology, in chemistry, in geology, in human remains, in botany, in different fields. And our museum is an integrated uh, institution. So you want to say that uh, this museum is going to be an evolution here in Egypt, that's going to be a turning point in uh, tourism and Egyptians, of course, that come to know more about their country and uh, uh, it's, it's going to be a turning point at the end of the day? Yeah, of course, of course. I think uh, it will be a change point uh, in Egypt uh, and it will be uh, a most famous uh, tour, tourism or touristic uh, destination because uh, that uh, has a lot of values. Uh, it has a lot of antiquities from different periods, not allowed for uh, other places. Uh, has different fields uh, inside it, not uh, only archaeology, uh, as I mentioned. Uh, we have different um, uh, fields here in our museum, uh, and I think I think uh, uh, we can we can uh, quote and we can attempt uh, many types of visitors for us yes. uh, uh, children and war. We have also here uh, classes, classes for museum, five classes for museum education uh, to, to uh, organize a workshop uh, for children, for students uh, in uh, primary school, uh, primary school, secondary school, universities, uh, and uh, after post-graduate also. And I think uh, our museum will um, will be a changeable point for the world. We wish Not you all only. the best, best yeah. sir. And Ahmed has been yeah. asking about mummies for like five minutes. Royal mummies, sir. Uh, how important is that <laughs> to be having here uh, at the museum? Uh, the mummies coming from uh, Tahrir Square because uh, this is a thing that I love and uh, I love to ask about, as uh, Rana said. <laughs> What is the importance of having uh, the mummies here uh, at the museum? So, uh, if we are uh, con uh, dedicated or focusing on this area, uh, around us there are many cemeteries, uh, modern cemeteries, uh, Mamluk, uh, and the cemetery of Imam Shafi, and so. Mostly Adima in general. Yes. Of course. And when we will move the mummies from Egyptian museum, we will exhibit in a um, virtual context. This mummies from ancient time. And around us, there are a lot of cemeteries uh, related to Christian, related to some foreign uh, cemeteries, American cemeteries and so cemetery. And I think we exhibit this seems in virtual context. And uh, the next things, 
uh, the mummies will be exhibited in different method uh, than that, uh, that they are exhibiting in Egyptian museum. We will exhibit the mummies uh, through modern exhibition, through modern uh, methods, as we, we made some CT scan for some mummies. And we will study uh, uh, these mummies in uh, the labs of DNA that we have here in our museum to make genealogy between the mummies, to know this king and his family, and this his family was true family or not true. Yes. By studying in our labs in DNA, uh, and also we can know a lot of information about the mummies. We can know the stature and the toll of each mummy through CT scan uh, examination. Yes. We can know the diseased, the mm. diseases mm. of the mummy, how the king died. died. Mm. And we can know the last uh, food that the uh, king had, uh, had eaten. Uh, and also we can know the the uh, deceased and statures uh, uh, and uh, the bones and how the king a, a died. A very exciting part. How the king died. Yes, a very exciting because part of uh, the dynamic, of course. Mm. During uh, fighting uh, against enemies as second Ra, second Ra or second mm. Ra. Uh, and some kings killed during uh, mm. conspiracy as King Ramses III. And it will be uh, interesting for uh, visitors to know a lot of inform information yes. related to the king. Mm -hmm. And also we'll exhibit some uh, object, uh, objects mm -hmm. related to each king and uh, mm -hmm. the coffin of each one. And I think uh, it will yes. be more interest, uh, interested for the visitors yes, for the tourists this. and for the Egyptians as oh, well. Of course, uh, of course. Mr. Mahrous al sanadidi the PhD researcher in the heritage and the museums, uh, the chief curator at the NAMIC. Thank you very much for being with us today on Nile uh, Cruise. Not at all. You are welcome. And uh, I hope you enjoy your tour in our museum. Uh, Mr. Mahrous al sanadidi the PhD researcher in the heritage and the museums and the chief curator at the NAMIC. Thank you very much for being with us today. Not at all, and thank you for coming to our museum. And uh, I hope to repeat uh, your visit soon. We will open uh, two new galleries soon, the Core Exhibition Gallery and uh, Royal Mummies Galleries. And I hope to make uh, a promotion for us for this event. And thank you again, and you are, you are welcome every thank time. You. Thank to you. our museum. Dr. Mahrouz, of course, it was uh, very ha a pleasure having you with us, and, uh, and thank you so much for your informative knowledge and adding to us, of course, a uh, lot of information that we needed to listen to through you. Thank you so much. Dear viewers, this was this segment of Nile Cruise. Stay with us. We'll be back again. <laughs>